Hi, I'm Pete Gerlach. I'm the author of the nonprofit Break the Cycle website. That website is a series of eight self-study lessons that I think every adult can profit from. The lessons come from my experience uh, over 31 years of being a professional therapist. The second lesson has to do with communicating effectively. Do you think of yourself as an effective communicator in all situations with all people? In my interaction with thousands of adults and kids and parents and families and couples, my observation is probably less than 10% of average people, college educated or not, know how to communicate effectively. Moreover, they don't know what they don't know about effective communication. That's why Lesson 2 exists. What is effective communication? That requires you to know why do we communicate? Pause for a minute and see how you answer that question. If a 14-year-old kid asked you, why don't we communicate, what would you say? What I now say is, well, we communicate in order to reduce or fill up to five needs. A need is a discomfort, uh, physical, psychological or emotional, even spiritual. We communicate to reduce or fill needs. What needs? The first need is the need to feel respect from yourself and your partner. It's one reason we communicate. Did you know that? The second need is to vent. The third need is to give or get information. The, f the next need <clears throat> is to cause action. Start something, stop something, change something. The last of five needs is to avoid something unpleasant. I want to discuss dinner with you tonight, so we make sure that we have something we both like. There are five reasons you communicate with every other person and they communicate with you. Effective communication then occurs when both people get their current needs met well enough in their own opinion. Sounds simple, right? It's not. There's a second requirement for effective communication that you already know, but you may not know you know. Have you ever gotten your needs met with another person and yet felt bad about the process you had with them? Maybe they were disrespectful, or you were sarcastic, or you, somebody raised their voice, or you controlled each other, or manipulated, or something like that? The second of two requirements for effective communication is that both people feel good about the process that went on inside of them, inside of their partner, and between them, between you, between you two. You got your needs met, you feel good about the process. There are three things you need in order to achieve these two objectives. First, you need your true self to be in charge of your personality. That will make no sense to you until you study lesson one in my website. You may be used to being controlled by a false self, in which case you won't know you have a problem, but it often means you cannot achieve getting your needs met in a way that feels good enough with other people. So you need your true self to be in charge consistently, and you need, ideally, your partner's true self to be in charge of her or him. That will give you the best odds of the second thing you need, which is awareness. Awareness of what? You need to be aware in important situations, not ho-hum situations, but key situations. You need to be aware, what do I need here? Why am I communicating? And why are you communicating? You also need to be aware of the process that's going on inside of you. For instance, am I centered? Am I focused? 
Am I clear-minded? Am I thinking effectively? You need to know those things as you're communicating. And your partner needs to know those things about him or her. So you need to be aware of what's going on inside of you, inside of your partner, and between you. You need your true self in charge, and you need two levels of awareness. And that's what you need for effective communication. Well, what happens if you don't have these requisites? What happens is you have, in important communication situations, you have one chance in 16. 6% 6 are the odds that you'll communicate effectively. You and your partner will both agree. Yeah, that was a good communication. How does 1 in 16, where does that come from? There are 16 possibilities between you and any person at any time. You get your needs met, they don't. You feel good about the process, they don't. They feel good about the process, you don't. They got their needs met, you didn't. The best possibility is only one out of 16 chances, which is, I feel good about the our process, and so do you. I got my needs met well enough, and so did you. One chance in 16, 6%. Is it any wonder that so many people have significant relationship problems, which largely occur because their false self is in charge, they don't know what they need, and they don't know how to communicate effectively. You can learn to overcome those things by studying Lesson 1 and Lesson 2. They're free. Free for nothing. There's no catch. There's no hook. I offer this to you because it feels good to me. I hope I'd like to be of use to people. That's why I'm doing this. So I encourage you to try out the Break the Cycle website, sfhelp.org. Study Lessons 1 and Lesson 2 first before you do the rest of the lessons. <clears throat> if you have any feedback on the site, the web page, the concepts, at the bottom of every web page is a link that says Contact. That will raise a um, window on your screen where you can communicate with me. You can give me your information. I'd be glad to receive it. I hope you learned something useful here and that you take a high interest, especially if you're a parent, because your kids need to know how to communicate effectively. I hope you'll be motivated to teach them. Thanks for watching.